come to see Jitendra Gupta or advocate on record for Supreme Court. Uh, it gives me a lot of pleasure in, in inviting you all to this webinar on codes and wages, codes on wages 2019 and its implications. As you may all be aware, the central government has passed three codes related to labor laws in our country. One of the most critical one is the new code on wages 2019 that will be applicable for establishments and enterprises operating in India. Labor comes under the concurrent list in our constitution, which means that both the center and the state governments have joint jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Due to this factor, labor wage regulations in India have been very highly fractured with multiple central legislations often conflicting with state provisions. In fact, even uh, some of the central provisions have been confusing as certain provisions are covered under multiple regulations in the center itself. For instance, presently maternity benefits are covered under four legislations while wage is defined in various acts leading to uh, different interpretations. We understand that the new code was brought to avoid the regulatory uh, uh, multiplicity of the numerous codes it supersedes in order to provide one comprehensive wage code under one legislation. The central code now supersedes all previous rules like payment of wages procedure rules 1937, payment of wages nomination rules 2009, minimum wages central rules 1950, and minimum wage central advisory board rules 2011. This in a way is both an update as well as a simplification of wage rules that is expected to ease doing business in the country. Even in 2019 code needs to, uh, even this code needs to be notified separately by each state. And it is delays in this process that is presently delaying the implementation of the code. The central government on its part has already announced the code on wages uh, rule 2020 that apply to all central government establishments like railways, mines, oil fields, PSU banks, and other establishments carried out by or under the government, uh, the central government. A nationwide implementation of the code is expected to be announced once coordination with all state governments is achieved. Some of the key highlights of the new code are, the, co uh, the code tries to establish a singular and uniform definition of wages as applicable for minimum wages, payment of wages and payment of bonus across all establishments in the country. The code provides separate definitions for employees and workers where employees cover persons carrying out managerial and administrative roles while workers cover contractual or part-time engagements like working journalists or sales promotion professionals. Besides a uniform definition and formula for calculating wages, the code firm establishes equal remuneration for all irrespective of gender or other discriminatory factors. The new code has obvious implications for institutions and establishments who act as employers. On one hand, it streamlines strict compliances for employers for certain provisions like payments of minimum wages, payment of wages within stipulated time, and maintaining records and other such details. However, on the other, it is, it is also expected to reduce litigation and cost of compliance as multiple record keeping and filings are done away with this consolidation. For instance, while the period of limitation for filing claims relating to wages and bonus has been enhanced to three years from existing provisions that range from six months to two years, the penalty for non-compliance has been substantially enhanced. The new code on wages is a major legislative reform that each and every employer needs to be acutely aware of and start preparing for in advance before it officially is announced for implementation. And to better understand the nuances of the code, we are happy to have with us Mr. Jitendra Gupta, Advocate on Record, Supreme Court of India. Sri Gupta is a young and dynamic advocate who specializes in labor matters. In fact, I believe a very engaging session that we, uh, you know, uh, you did for our members in the earlier part of uh, last year, it, it was very beneficial and we've had very good reviews from that session, sir. Mr. Uh, Gupta has also been an active member of Rotary Club and he also has a political fiction novel to his credit. May I now invite Mr. Gupta to take the stage and uh, help us understand this new uh, wage codes better. Thank you, President Shah, uh, for that uh, generous introduction, both of the topic as well as mine. And uh, thank you, MCCI, for this continued uh, relationship, which gives us an opportunity 
and this medium of uh, online has given an opportunity for us even though we are based in i'm based in delhi but it gives us a connection to uh, the other part of the country as well and it just like feels that you just a click away so without wasting much time because the uh, topic is a little exhaustive i'll just try to put up my presentation just let me know is the screen visible yes your screen is visible okay so i'll move on directly to the presentation part uh, you know uh, beginning on a lighter note in our country the easiest thing to remember is the mother cow so i would uh, put it as an acronym as codon wages as cow so that we don't miss out the name and the spellings thereof mr shah has already given a very wonderful introduction see the the prime minister narendra modi government has taken a lot of uh, initiatives when it comes to uh, doing ease of doing business so that if the laws are simplified and uh, we india should become an attractive investment uh, hub uh, for doing businesses so our labor laws have been there in place for years some of them even before independence and much of these labor laws have a uh, confusing and overlapping definitions and interpretations so with a view the government has decided and enacted four laws which are combined called as the labor codes one is the code on wages 2019 which we are going to uh, discuss in detail then the code on uh, the occupational safety health uh, and working conditions codes and the industrial uh, the industrial relations code 2020 and the code on social security 2020 all these four laws as such has been passed by the parliament uh, the code on wages was passed in 2019 the rest of the three have been passed in 2020 the only issue as mr shah explained that uh, to implement these the states also have to formulate their rules and it has to be done in consultation with the states as is in the concurrent list so uh, initially that proposed date was for implementation and notification was first april though the rules are taking time so it may be uh, brought in force on any particular day now the now difference that it is going to bring is this the the first code the occupational safety code is going to merge the following acts at least 13 acts important being the factories act the contract labor act Uh, for the industry perspective then the special acts is uh, for the bd and cigar for journalists the cine workers so 13 acts are going to be merged in the first code which is the occupational safety health and working conditions code then the industrial relation code which is widely used in industry these three acts will be merged the industrial dispute act 1947 the trade union act and the industrial employment standing orders act these three will be merged in the industrial relations code then the code on social security is going to merge another nine laws including the employment company employee compensation the esi act the act related to provident fund maternity benefit payment of gratuity and so on so all these nine acts will be merged under the social security code so now today we are going to talk in detail on code on wages because if we talk of all the laws in one go then it's a full day session so we will confine our scope to code on wages this act is uh, there to amend and consolidate the laws related to wages and payment of bonus the code extends to the entire country and like the other acts this act will all this code will also merge for uh, repeal four uh, uh, of the acts the payment of wages act the minimum wages act the payment of bonus act and the equal remuneration act now president of india gave assent to this code on 8th august 2019 and it was published on official gazette on the same day the draft rules were then uh, published in the official gazette on 7th july 2020 and objections were invited however the provisions of this code are yet to uh, 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 take place 
they have to come into force the preamble of the court states that it is an act to amend and consolidate the laws relating to the wages and uh, bonus and matters connected there and it aims to transform the old and obsolete laws into one code now these are some of the uh, salient features of the code one it removes uh, the multiplicity the multiplicity of the wage definitions if you see the wages are defined separately in different different laws now hereafter since the definition of wages will be merged and only a single definition of wages will be there so as mr shah suggested in his opening remarks that it should significantly reduce litigation as well as compliance the floor wages now right now we know the minimum wages every state fix, fixes a minimum wage and uh, it is implemented but there is still a large disparity between the minimum wages of the various states as a result of which some states become more um, attractive for the workers while uh, the cost of compliance and some some businesses find it uh, as an unequal uh, forum so to do a level playing field the central government will now fix a floor wage by taking into account the geographical locations and living standard of the workers and in any case no state will be able to fix the minimum wage uh, below the floor wage so the floor wage will be fixed by the central government and then the government the, the central or the state governments may fix minimum wages for various skill uh, skill categories and the place of employments but they in any case has to be more than the floor wages then the payment of wages uh, this uh, earlier the date was 10th now the employees will be getting monthly salary by 7th of next month uh, those who are working on monthly basis and uh, daily wages should get it on the same day so the time of for the payment of wages is also going to be defined and uh, one more consolidation that this is going to do is that payment of wages is applicable on both workers and employees uh, as we know under the industrial dispute act the uh, workers uh, uh, and the employees have, are different so those uh, employees who are in the administrative or supervisory role or managerial role they are not considered as workers they are considered as an employees but here in this definition under the code uh, uh, the applicability is both categories so what we typically call as the blue collar or the white collar that that difference will disappear they all will have to be treated at par so if the salary date is fixed as 7th it will apply to one and all then the code also seeks to ensure for every worker some right to sustenance which we are going to discuss then the rules bring, bring this salient features the the uh, calculation of minimum wages then uh, the floor wage the draft rules provide that the central government will decide the floor wage on the basis of minimum living standards taking in, in, into account food clothing and housing for a family of uh, three consumption units then work hours that the draft rules now suggest that a normal working day will constitute a maximum of 9 hours with a maximum spread of 12 hours including rest intervals so the spread over may be increased to 16 hours in certain cases and the inspection scheme uh, there is a provision that to again in the direction of ease of doing business that the inspection scheme will be more of a web based inspection which will call for inspection related information electronically thereby minimizing what we typically call as the inspector raj now the definition of wage wage is defined under section 2y of the code and broadly broadly if i do not go much into the technical definition it will include the basic pay the dearness allowance and a retaining allowance if any and it will exclude the following categories which is the bonus the value of house accommodation the provident fund conveyance allowance special expenses house rent allowances remuneration under any award or settlement overtime allowance commission payable to employee 
gratuity, retrenchment, etc. Now, this is a very important feature that you'll have to see that there are a large number of cases where the uh, the basic wage, the basic wage, or what you uh, what constitute the wages, which is the basic and uh, DA primarily, that they they are less and the other other allowances are more, and in many cases it may not even be fifty percent of the total uh, remuneration of a particular employee. Now this uh, code says if the exclusions under the definition of wage exceed one half or such percentage as the central government may fix but assuming it is one half then the amount which exceeds the half will also be treated as wages i'll show an example shortly which will give you and i'll come back to this then these are deemed wages where an employee is given in lieu of the whole or part of the wages any remuneration in kind the value of such remuneration should not exceed 15 percent of the wages uh, payable to him and it should be deemed to be a part of the wage now this is the computation part that i was talking to now suppose we take a case where the basic please note that this is just a calculation it may or may not be compliant to any law but it's just a working sheet that i have prepared for an example let's suppose the basic pay is ten thousand the dns allowance is five thousand the bonus is one thousand the pf contribution is eighteen hundred the conveyance allowance is sixty two hundred house rent is fifty five overtime allowance is sixty five and commission is two thousand so the total works out to thirty eight thousand while as per the definition of wages only 15000 will be wages which is the basic and dns allowance and 50% of 38000 is 19000 so there is a difference of 4000 so which will mean that this 4000 difference will also be added to the wages part and the wages will be calculated as 19000 instead of 15000 which means all the statutory payments on the part of the employer will be determined at the rate of, of for that the reference will be taken as 19000 for the purpose of overtime calculation the gratuity calculation even the pf contribution so this changes dramatically here so as a result of which i feel that all the employees uh, and the employers will have to rework the entire chart so that the minimum wages is also satisfied and the wages uh, the 50 percent limit of the wages is also taken care of so it will require a, a, a renegotiation or a recomputing of the entire chart of the employee now there is one more thing the bonus payments presently there is an upper limit uh, i think 21000 which be for the eligibility of bonus now uh, under the code applicable on establishments employing 20 or more and bonus will be paid to every employee earning wages below the amount notified so here the government will notify and it may vary from state to state as to what would be the wage below which an employee will be uh, a worker on an employee will be eligible for bonus the payments now bonus payments will have to be credited in the bank account of employee within eight months from the close of the accounting year the period of eight months can be extended to two years by the appropriate government on and there is only one disqualification that an employee will be disqualified from receiving this bonus if he is he or she is terminated from service on being convicted for a sexual offense now we'll briefly discuss some of the impacts on employees employers because uh, we are here at the merchant chamber so we'll be uh, i believe we are representing most of our audiences here for the employers are taking care of them so one the applicable to all including organized and unorganized sector the government sector is also applicable but for the private sector i'm saying that there is no definition of uh, organized and unorganized it is applicable to all and the earlier ceiling of 24000 under payment of wages act is also done away so the coverage would increase so the, the, the number of employees to whom the minimum wages would be applicable would increase for each each of the employees significantly then there will be an increase in minimum wages 
because no employer shall pay to any employee less than the minimum wages and of course the minimum wages as i explained earlier will also vary with the floor wage uh, in in a state so the in increase in minimum wage would uh, would be a natural corollary to uh, the employers for most sectors and i as i explained from the last example that the recomputation of wages will be required so that the uh, if your 50% of the wages uh, of the uh, remuneration is not wages and that to not the minimum wages then of course uh, even if you are paying more in the other remunerations and other allowances that will be added back on this side so it is better you reclassify and recompute the wages accordingly then as explained earlier the payment of wages the settlement period for the wages has been specified as seventh day of the succeeding month uh, and the mode of payment uh, it has to be now there is no cash payment it has to be paid by uh, uh, electronically or through check and uh, cash payments will be only if the central government notifies and up to the limit that it can, uh, notifies then payment in case of resignation and termination in case of removal dismissal retrenchment now this is very important in case if an employee resigns or terminates then the wages has to be paid within two working days in that case and uh, the employer may have to pay uh, leave encashment bonus and gratuity at a higher rate as explained now with the increase in minimum wages and increased in wages after the recomputation is higher than what you are paying currently then the leave encashment bonus and gratuity will also be at a higher rate now as i is explaining that there will be no difference between the workers and the employees the code gives uh, code does not differentiate the two when it comes to entitlement so presently uh, sometimes the employer used to negotiate with the employees that let the workers get their wages and they used to negotiate with the employee and defer their payments and otherwise now they will not have may not have those rights to curtail the employer's right to deductions of and even if an employee is resigning then the payouts will have to be immediate for the contract employees uh, uh, the the rules require uh, the draft rules require that the employers will have to pay to the contractors in advance so that the contractors can pay to the employees timely which means if the employees have to the final employees have to get the payment on 7th then you will have to uh, cover the gap and pay to the contractor a little more in advance so that the workers uh, the actual workers or beneficiary employees get it on 7th and uh, and in case if the contractor fails to pay the minimum bonus to the employees uh, and uh, the uh, the principal employers receives written information then the employer will be responsible for such payment for the bonus then the compliances uh, the compliances should ideally reduce because now the compliances were required in multiple laws so the compliances and the maintenance of records should simplify and uh, it should reduce but there could be a challenge for compliance if a company or an organization is having offices in different states for them it may not have that much impact uh, but it may eventually reduce some cost of compliance uh, then the burden of proof now this is important that where a claim has been filed on account of non payment of remuneration or bonus or uh, wages then the burden to prove will lie on the employer and not on the employee so whatever you are paying uh, one the cash is discouraged under the law and even otherwise everything should be properly accounted the proper vouchers should be there what is being paid and what is not being paid and intimated to the employees also if if employees are on email then there should be a system where you are uh, updating them on email what payments have been made to them and if they are not on email then uh, the, the payment should be physically re received also the voucher should be signed simultaneously as explained in the opening remarks the limitation period for the uh, employees claims have been increased uh, earlier it used to be 6 months to 2 years in some legislation now it is 3 years just in par with the normal limitation law and this code will have an overriding effect which means uh, 
if under any agreement settlement or contract there is a lesser remuneration or a lesser entitlement agree then the court will override that so even by agreement you cannot pay less than what the court requires now this is very important uh, the the punishments the penalties this is where i slightly disagree with the government that the businesses and industry and employers should not be treated like criminals even though there may be financial penalties but the provisions of imprisonment should be done away as i'll just speak about and i'll uh, request uh, mr shah from the mcci to suitably put a representation to the various governments so that such provisions are removed from the law so if an employer pay less than the due amount to any employee for the first instance the fine of 50000 can be imposed but if a similar offence is committed within 3 years then imprisonment for a term up to 3 months or fine up to 1 lakh or both can be imposed similarly for contravention of payments if an employer contravenes any provision of the code a fine of 20000 for the first instance and if similar offence is committed within 5 years then imprisonment up to 1 month and uh, fine up to 40000 or both non maintenance or improper maintenance employer can be fined up to 10000 impact on litigation uh, it it is believed that because of a lot of ambiguity and complexity that the litigation should reduce however sometimes as we have experienced in the case of ibc and even in gst that sometimes when you have a new law and there is some ambiguity so sometimes it you needs to travel to the higher courts and supreme court where some of the gray areas get settled so sometimes it may uh, have some question where an interpretation or ambiguity is there so uh, that's it uh, that was the time allotted to me and that's the uh, brief overview i wanted to give you in the limited amount of time uh, i would be open to any queries though uh, it will be best understood once the rules for the state and the center are in place and your local person who is handling your labor matters would be your best guide who could you know educate you more of that so thank you for the patient hearing and over to mr shah uh thank you shri gupta you know this has been quite informative but uh, i'm sure uh, you know uh, when more of these uh, rules are adopted by the states and it's notified we'll be able to understand uh, you know the entire picture more clearly uh, but there are a couple of questions i would request uh, mr sushant ji from my secretariat to get mr suresh bangar on the panel uh, window so that he can ask his question please bring mr suresh uh, and after that get mr vidhan rasi wasia on the panel please uh mr bangar please go ahead and uh, you know you can ask your question directly to shri jitendra gupta ji well my question is about uh, ctc when we can uh, compute the ctc we take into consideration various uh, leaves and allowances will that also take care on this uh, minimum wages and 50% ratio see uh, as i told you the wage will only consider three things basic wage dearness allowance and if you have a retainer allowance in some cases when people want to retain they give some kind of a retainer allowance which is not generally a trend so everything else is the excluded category and will be treated as additional things and then the total remuneration of a month will be calculated 50% will be taken and if that your wage which is the basic plus da is less than 50% then uh, the excess component will be added to that uh, so example if somebody is getting the basic and da is only 20000 but you are paying a, 
total remuneration of 50000 after considering then for all computation it will be taken as 25000 no, i got you but the point is that uh, there are various facilities which is being given to uh, for uh, for family welfare like medical allowances uh, annual leave leave travel allowances all those allowances are there which also takes in if we take into consideration those comes to about 50 60 percent of the total uh, wage component so that is what my uh, question is whether those should be considered or not uh, while taking this into see they they will not be considered but as i told you if they qualify for 50 percent if you are 50 percent because once that will be treated in the definition of wage and if it is exceeding the minimum wage it should take care of the minimum wage but the revised wage will be will be taken for consideration for calculation of uh, the leave encashments for the calculation of gratuity and for the calculation of provident fund deduction thank you Um, Somebody had asked about the presentation. I have already emailed the president pre presentation to Mr. Shah, and I am sure the secretariat will email to all concerned. Yes, we will do that. And uh, Mr. Jeevan Chakraborty, uh, do you uh, would like would you like to ask any question to Sri Gupta? You need to unmute yourself. I have only a simple question. What is the uh, intent of the government behind uh, the legislative frame to punish, uh, to impose punishment. What is the social object behind it? That is my question. I think they just want to bring a deterrent in place. They, they feel that, uh, uh, see, otherwise we also have a corporate social responsibility, CSR also, which the industry, the corporate are by and less following. So that is what I said, that if we trust the businesses, then the compliances should be there. And if the compliances are not there, the, the government may impose a heavier financial penalty rather than bring in the provision where the imprisonment is going to be there. Because such provisions then bring in the harassment, the inspector Raj back. Because it is very easy to bring a complaint and uh, getting getting uh, them adjudicated. So that is where I disagree because it is contrary to the spirit of ease of doing business. And I agree with Mr. Chakrabarti. And that is why I, in my presentation, I myself said that chambers like MCCI and the other chambers in the country, wherever I believe, should represent that these provisions of imprisonment should be done away with. Yes, uh, but uh, I have. An, uh, I think there is another angle from the government's perspective. Perhaps uh, there may be certain incidences when uh, uh, the section of industrialists might have uh, committed some uh, wrongs, which force the government to take this deterrent measure. No, that is Maybe what I there said. Are some the deterrent is. It is basically to act as a deterrent so that people don't. The rich does not get away by paying a, a meager penalty and the poor has to run from pillar to post. So that is perhaps the logic behind it. But so that these provisions are not misused, some kind of a balance is to be struck. And if you read the pro uh, provision carefully, it does not say that the imprisonment is there in every part. It is imprisonment or penalty or both. So there is an element of discretion but yes, that element is there. Thank you very much. Uh, let us understand the uh, whole uh, scenario in terms of the uh, uh, rules to be published with the government. Different states so that uh, these punitive measures are not put in place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, now I would request uh, Mr. Amit Kundu to be promoted as a panelist. So, Shanjit, please promote Mr. Amit Kundu. He has a question. Mr. Kundu, please go ahead and ask your question.
So Kundu, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, my, my question is to Sri Jitendra Gupta ji. Is that uh, if normally what we do is uh, for employees that if you have a package like for five lakh, six lakh of CTC, earlier we used to break it up in basic HRA, convince, and a special rest amount will go to the special allowance as per the laws applicable. That is uh, around forty to forty-five percent of the CTC is going to basic. And 50% of the basic is HRA, and uh, normally 1600 is non-taxable up in uh, convents, and rest will go to the special allowance. And apart from that, in other cases like leave and cashment and other allowances, along with we are we used to make the packages. Now, what about after this, uh, you know, implementation of this new co wage code? You will have to keep your basic plus dearness allowance to 50%. You will have to restructure it. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. We do not have any DA concept in our organization. Ha, so if it is not there, then your basic will have to be fifty percent. The basic has to be fifty percent of the total means uh, monthly gross salary. Yeah, the total before any deduction mm -hmm. has to be fifty percent. And rest amount like uh, we can uh, define as a special allowance or uh, as you said retaining. Uh, you you will have continue to have HRA or your travel allowance or other other uh, uh, remunerations as you are having. Basically, whatever is the monthly CTC instead of an annual CTC, whatever is the monthly CTC, the fifty percent of that should fit in the wages category. Yes, got it. Just one more question: Is there any changes in the uh, gratuity like? Uh, Normally, people used to, uh, you know, covered after five years of continuous of service. So it will remain same, or is there any changes for that? Sir, the gratuity is going to be in a different code. Uh, as I explained to you, there are four different labor codes. So, uh, pardon me, but I am not discussing the other codes in detail. Uh, today has been confined to code on wages, and which will deal with the wages and bonus. But yes, in any case. Uh, the cost of gratuity is going to increase because the wages are going to increase. So that much I can say. That now the um, the rules with respect to gratuity is going to be in a different code, and that needs to be settled first. Okay, sir. Not an issue, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kundu. Uh, so Shanji, please get uh, Shalu Sharma ji on the panel. Answer. Uh, please go ahead. Shaluji, please go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, uh, my question is like, say, suppose our salary structure is uh, uh, we have uh, more than 50% of basic, uh, maybe 60% also, and for 50%. Now, say, suppose uh, uh, the other components like HRA or whatever we are uh, adding to our components. So, is there any limitations that yeah, our HRA should be 40% of basic or such like or anything like that? Ma'am, your existing this uh, this law does not ha have any impact as such on your other alliances. It is not impacting them. It is up to you how you continue. And in case, if it still exceeds, I am saying it is not going to... Suppose your, uh, your employee is getting 50,000. Now, because of the changes, it, it, out of that set, you've already kept a basic at 25,000. Now, for a particular month, if the impact is that it ultimately ends up being 52 instead of 50, after calculating HRA, so for that particular month, the wage will be treated as 26,000 and not 25,000, which means the, the leave encashment for that month or the gratuity computation or other things will change. One, you should not be less than the minimum wage. And second, for the purpose of computation, 50% of the CTC of a month is going to be. Now, you don't have to change your HRA percentage, but obviously, you can change certain things like if you were giving incentives in some cases where the sales is involved, you have a lesser basic and you have a more of a commission structure. 
Now, the problem is that the commission would not be eligible for provident fund deduction. So the employee was losing on that aspect. So now what will happen is that the government wants that the basics should be substantial. It should be at least 50% of the total uh, amount so that all, all gratuity benefits, deductions, uh, leave attachments, bonuses would be computed on the basis of the basic. So for that aspect, uh, your computation for HRA and others will not change. But you just have to see that your wages remain 50%. Yes, the thing is, my question was, we have kept it 50% or more than that, not below that. But uh, one of my consultants said that you cannot keep your HRA more than your basic uh, basic or the basics are jada apne bhi rakh sakte, ya something. So is it mandatory? Uh, what I can understand is HRA we keep because of our... Ma'am, HRA will be not... How much would it be? HRA will be a percentage of the basic, na? Yes. So if your basic is around 15,000 or 20,000, yeah. the HRA cannot be more than the basic in any case. Yes. Uh, I would now request, uh, you know, Nasi Vasika, he is our uh, chair of a youth wing. So I would request him to ask his question. And, uh, I would then request Kanji. Uh, one second. Mr. Manish Pal for the final question. I think Shaluji will have to mute herself. Yeah, so uh, uh, Sushanji, you can also let uh, Shaluji get back to the attendee pool. Thank you, Mr. President, for bringing me on board. And uh, thank you, sir, for enlightening us with uh, your valuable input about. Uh, the wage rate and it was surely a very enlightening session. I'm sure all of our participants uh, will have something to take back from this session. So by not taking much of your time, I have a quick question. We've seen that uh, wages play a very deep impact in the businesses and industry as a whole. But do you see any disadvantages related to having a minimum wage in place altogether? No, I don't think so that there is any disadvantage, but I can only say that the cost is going to increase. We, we are going through a very uh, tough financial stage post-COVID. This Incidentally, these labor codes have been there immediately after the COVID era, as I would say, and the COVID era has not yet gone. So businesses are already under stress and strain. So... Uh, and you know, whenever we move from one system, one legal regime to the other, uh, pardon me, but the ones who benefit most are the consultants and advocates like me, because the transition is required. So initially, you all know, GST may have simplified things, but when GST came, you were earlier having an excise consultant, a sales consultant. So the initial compliance, the software will have to be updated. This will have to be done. So the initial infrastructure cost, which includes the technology, the humans, and the consultants, will be borne, which will be more than what you are spending on an ongoing basis. The, the, the staff will have to be educated. And then your financial payoff will increase. So initially, the cost is cost of compliance. The cost will be more to the businesses. But it may be a bitter pill, which may eventually uh, improve the uh, quality and you know it will benefit I would say the organized sector more than the unorganized sector because the organized sector is already taking care of most of the other things now with the unorganized sector being brought into the impact the Darwinism will play into the picture unfortunately those who will not be able to bear this some of them may will have to wither away with the tide but those of them who will survive this who will survive this compliance will become rather upgrade themselves to the organized sector. So a lot of payments being paid in cash, uh, going through the contractor. So I would say the systems are going to improve. It's a bitter pill. Only the timing post-COVID and the, when the economy is slightly uh, in, in, in a tight mode, uh, it, the timing could be an issue, but otherwise I feel it's, it's for the long-term benefit of all stakeholders. 
Okay. Uh, you know, I think we can, can we allow one final question, Sri Gupta? If you uh, yeah, 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 sir, take it. Yeah, it's up to you. You are the boss. Okay. So uh, we'll uh, you know uh, uh, I would request Sushanji to uh, promote uh, Mr. R uh, Ms. Ritu Priya Sen Gupta and uh, or Mr. Simran Singh uh, because you know we have uh, two of them and uh, whoever is uh, available, we could ask the question. In the meantime, Mr. Jivan Chakravarti had asked a question. Ah, Mr. The Chakravarti. code is not in place. The code is not been notified. So as of now, you will continue to do what you are doing. You know, there is a confusion. When you see Google on the internet, it says that the uh, law has been passed by the parliament. It has been published in the gadget and so and so date. Do not go by that. Even though the parliament has passed all four, but the repealment of the existing laws will only happen when the new codes will come into place. That will only happen when the states will notify, the states will have rules. It may take longer, it may take... So till that time, whatever you are doing, you will continue to do this while preparing yourself for the future. Thank you very much. We understood it, but we want to have it reconfirmed from uh, your kind self. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, you know, because of some technical uh, issues, uh, my admin uh, is not uh, able to, you know, patch them in. So I will just read out the question that uh, Ritu Priya Chakravarti had for us. Uh, the question is, if we take 50% of CTC as basis, then the PF contribution will increase. But if the CTC comprises of PF employee and employer contribution, then the PF and annual bonus is one and a half months of basic salary by which PF and annual bonus accumulation will increase, but net enhanced salary per month will decrease. How do you go about it? You know, if you find it too uh, specific a query, we can let it go as well. Because no, no, no. I, I understood. Uh, this is one of the criticisms from the employee point of view that that is being uh, spread or circulated or believed also that because of this, while the... Uh, employer's contribution for the PF will increase as a simultaneous deduction of the, in the PF from the employee also will happen. So the employee will also have to go in for a higher deduction in provident fund, which would reduce the take home for the uh, employee. So now what used to happen that it was on the in the in the interest of the employee also that if much of the amount was in the other categories, the PF deduction was not happening. But if you see the long term, the the employee was losing on the contribution that was accruing by the contribution from the employer. So, uh, as I feel that the legislation has two intents. One is simplification. And somewhere down the line, the social interest is there that in the short run, it may uh, not uh, look very attractive to the employer and the employee. But the government as a social measure wants to ensure that the employee's entitlement for the PF and the accumulation thereof should increase. And the uh, future impact on the gratuities and other things should also increase. So to that extent, you're right uh, that it will increase the deduction of provident fund every month. Uh, what do we have right now? And the employee take home would reduce. If I understood the question correctly. Sure. No, uh, we understand. And, you know, I think it's been a, a very engaging session. Uh, you know, uh, Ayan Mishra asked, please, can you say something about ESI facilities? So I don't think the question Yes, I would be merged in another law. So probably if Mr. Shah would permit me some time or feel, feel it is convenient, then we can have another session on the rest of the labor codes as and when we feel, because we will not be able to do justice in one hour slot. If we bring all the laws together, we'll end up not understanding any one of them. Sure. In Hindi, कि अगर आज आपको ये 50% वाला फार्मूला भी समझ आ गया ना तो ये सेशन वसूल है अपने को ज्यादा समझने का जरूरत नहीं है 
अपने को मोटा मोटा अगर ये 50 परसेंट का गणित समझ आ गया कि इसको कैसे करना है तो आज का यही टेक होम समझिए चलिए बहुत ही बाकी तो रूल्स आई जाएंगे वो सब शासब सर्कुलेट कर देंगे समझ आ जाएगा so with these words i'd like to you know propose an official vote of thanks to shri jitendra gupta ji uh, you know what is most endearing is that in addition to his knowledge he has a very very candid and unassuming way of explaining things and i think that is the reason that even the last session was well received uh, so has this session been and i'm sure with his uh, you know uh, willingness to take a couple of more sessions with the chamber and we would also like to explore the opportunity of bringing you to the chamber physically once things open up a little because uh, you know now that we have a working relationship with you our uh, broad based members of you know 700 plus members can benefit immensely from uh, your knowledge so with those words i'd like to propose a very hearty vote of thanks to shri jitendra gupta ji